Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a little bit of a while since I have been on here. Um, yeah, a lot's just been going on. I don't think I filmed with my dark hair, but yeah, I've gone dark again. Um, the blonde, I loved the blonde, but it was just too much maintenance. <laughs> Especially Lincoln's now one. I can't really just take him and let him sleep in the pram with me. Um, and so yeah, I just was like, nah, going dark, less maintenance, and yeah, loving it. I thought I would jump on here and just talk about Lincoln's sleep routine. Um, I know a few people on my Instagram um, were messaging me and asking me to kind of share what I did. Um, and so I've been wanting to do this video for a really long time, but I just, life has gotten in the way. I love that I said to myself, my pregnant self, that I would film, I'd have so much time to film when I'm like a stay at home mum and I'm not working um, and I'd be easily able to upload like one to two videos a week. Um, but the truth, truth is, I, like the days just get away from you. Like anyone else can relate. And like the time that he does nap, I've been doing stuff for me. Like I've been working out like four to five days a week, which is massive, like a massive improvement to my life and to my health. Um, and yeah, I've just been kind of taking the time to chill and those naps go really quick. And then, you know, you kind of go, go, go until the end of the day. And by like eight o'clock, I'm exhausted. Like Lincoln goes down to bed for bed and Ryan and I make dinner if he's home, if he's not working. And then I literally just go to bed and I'm like asleep by probably like 10 o'clock, if not earlier. So yeah, anyway, I'm back. I'll stop rambling. Um, I'm going to Lincoln's in daycare one day a week now. So basically I'm going to use that time to film videos and edit. Um, and yeah, hopefully I can get back to my one video a week. And yeah, without me blabbering on, I will get into today's video. Firstly, before I start talking about this, I just want to um, preface that every baby is completely different. Um, what works for me may not work for your baby. Um, and it's also, I just want people to know, like if you're a new mum watching this and your baby like hasn't yet slept through the night, that it is so, so, so normal for babies not to sleep through the night. Um, I wish I could tell myself that a few months ago when I was really struggling with Lincoln's sleep. Um, and it just like, just know it does get better and <laughs> they will eventually sleep through the night. Um, yeah, I kind of just tried to keep telling myself like, this is temporary. Like it's not, it's not always gonna be like this. I'm not always gonna be so tired. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to preface by saying that, um, just wanted to share my experience of how I've improved his sleep. Um, and if you can take some tips from this or if, if the tips do help, then that's awesome. And that's kind of really what I wanted to do, um, by sharing this, um, because yeah, being sleep deprived, like being a mum is hard enough and then to like topping that off with like lack of sleep or lack of quality sleep is just like it's really hard and um I feel for you if you're currently like struggling with your baby's sleep um there was definitely nights where I was like crying couldn't get him to sleep and like you just think what am I doing wrong I remember like he was maybe four months old or five five months old and I remember just like crying, like rocking him, just like, just so tired and just so exhausted. And all the babies in my mum's group were sleeping long stretches. And I was like, what, what's wrong with my baby? And like, what am I doing wrong? I think that's the most important thing too, is to not put it back on yourself. Like you're doing everything you possibly can and you are the best mum for your child um, or dad. But yeah, it's just some babies just just aren't good sleepers. Um, and yeah, anyway, let's get into the video. I'm going to start off by kind of just talking to you about like my first couple of weeks 
I haven't really shared that on here. This might be a little bit of a long video too because there's a lot, a lot to go through. <laughs> so yeah, Lincoln is now, he'll be 10 months in a couple of days. Um, so yeah, I will kind of just be telling you, pretty much running you through from when we brought him home to now in the last couple of months, he's really had a solid routine now. Um, and yeah, we did sleep train him. So I got a sleep cons consultant out um, and I used her tips and advice to like sleep train him, which really, really did work for us. And I know again, you know, some people don't agree with sleep training, but that's really worked for us and it's really changed our life for the better. Um, I want to also add that I breastfed him for eight months. Um, so for the first seven and a bit months, he was purely breastfed. So like, obviously he started solids at like four and a half months. Um, but he wasn't really eating much, but yeah, other than that, he didn't have any formula until he was just over seven months. Also, I'm so sorry if you can hear like this just constant uh, because they're actually like tree lopping next door. Um, and it's really annoying. So yeah, I'm hoping that is not too annoying. So the first night we brought him home. So, I mean, in the hospital, I was feeding him every three hours. Um, basically it ended up being like every two essentially because I didn't realize that the three hours wasn't from like the end of the feed. It's actually from the start of the feed. And at the start, he was feeding for like 20 minutes on each side. Um, so it's essentially like 40 plus minutes of feeding. Um, and then you, you know, you change them, put them back to bed. Um, and then in another like two and a bit hours, you're up again feeding again. So yeah, I was doing that. He was sleeping pretty good in the hospital. Like he actually wasn't too bad. Me on the other hand, I was not sleeping. Like I think the first three nights or even the first week I had like so little sleep like the first night I gave birth at nine o'clock I had to go get stitches um if you haven't um listened to my birth story or seen my birth vlog I'll link them both up here um because I talk about that in depth but basically yeah I didn't get back to my room until 1 30 a.m and then I was feeding him and I just I was on such an adrenaline high from giving birth that I just couldn't sleep like it's just yeah, and then the second night, I, like, I didn't sleep during the day. I was just, like, so just, I couldn't switch off. Um, and, yeah, I'm sure other people can relate, but you're just on such this, such a high that it's hard to switch off. I don't know. Anyway, so that's that. We brought him home the third night, and honestly, that was the worst night of our life. <laughs> Um, so we have a dog, Kevin. I'm sure you've seen Kevin if you've been here for a while. He's a miniature dash hound and he sleeps with us in our bed. Basically, he did not handle Lincoln coming home very well. He was very, very anxious and just wanted to get to him. But like, we didn't want to let him too close in case he got, you know, a bit narky with him. So he was like annoyed because he couldn't, he just wanted to get to him. So he was constantly like whining and barking and just like wanting to get to him. And we ended up having to like leave him out of our room and like in his bed in the lounge. But the whole night he was just scratching at the door, howling, just anxious. So like he would set Lincoln off and then he'd hear Lincoln and he'd go off again. And it was just a whole thing. And like Ryan and I, like we really didn't get much sleep that night at all like we were pretty much up all night with him um with both of them so yeah anyway the next morning ryan went to the vet we ended up getting him on some medication kevin not lincoln um because like we like he was so anxious and kevin didn't even sleep that night and once we got him on the medication he was able to get closer to lincoln and kind of you know be figure out you know this baby's here and he really did mellow out a bit and we only we actually only used the medication for maybe four to five days and then after that 
Kevin had completely adjusted. So yeah, that was our first night. It was just, oh, uh, and also, you know, I'm learning first time mum, I was navigating this whole breastfeeding thing. Um, and my milk hadn't come in and it's just a really, it was really, really full on. Um, then the next day the midwife came out to visit us and everything had been going good with feeding and everything. Um, and yeah, they were happy with like sort of his weight and stuff. And then after they left that night was the worst night. Like I honestly think I slept maybe an hour that night. He just wouldn't latch and I don't know. I don't know. My milk wasn't, hadn't come in yet. It was like day four or day, yeah, day, technically day three or four. Cause I gave birth like late on a Sunday. Um, and yeah, my milk hadn't come in. He was just crying nonstop. Every time I went to latch him, he would just pull off and cry, would not latch. I like remember just trying to latch him. Like I was trying to latch him like literally so many times and it had been like, I don't know, it had been like a crazy amount of time, like 16 hours or something since he'd like fully had a breastfeed and I was like freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, like he's gonna die. Like I was like a mess. Like I can't <laughs> actually like just bringing this up is giving me like flashbacks and I'm like, oh, I really don't wanna go through that again with my next baby. So I was freaking out. Like Ryan and I were taking turns tag teaming um, he would go sleep in the room. I'd have him out in the lounge room just trying to rock him to sleep. He was just crying the whole time. He wouldn't even sleep. Um, trying to relatch him every time. Nothing. Then, um, it got to like, yeah, like 1am or something. And it'd been a really long time. And I was like, Ryan's like, let's try and like help you express. Um, so he was like helping me in bed, like get colostrum out and we were feeding it to him in a little syringe um so that when we were able to do that that kind of eased my mind a bit because I'm like at least he's getting something we ended up phoning the helpline as well the maternal child health and they were just kind of like you know don't stress out too much like skin on skin you know keep offering it to him um blah 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 but like it didn't really help um, I was like, and I was also like, can I, should I try a nipple shield to see? And then they said, a nipple shield won't do anything. Um, and they were just kind of rude about it. And I was really a bit disappointing. Then the next morning, the midwives came out, thank God. And they helped me, um, latch him. He was just being really difficult. And it actually took Ryan and I, he was so strong as a newborn. Like he, I know like newborns have floppy neck. I like he never had floppy neck. And I know this sounds like an over exaggeration, but like he was strong, a strong baby. Um, and Ryan had to like hold his head on. Um, and I would like position myself to latch him on and like hold him there. And eventually like we got it. But um, before that, before they actually came, I, I was like, okay, let's just get the pump and start pumping. So I got my pump out. I had a single like Tommy Tippy pump from a friend that she gave me. Mind you, I did no research before this. Like I barely knew anything about breastfeeding. I knew like nothing about babies. I'd never really been around babies. So like obviously maybe if I was a bit better prepared, it wouldn't have been as bad, but I wasn't. So yeah, anyway, this is the situation. And um, my milk finally started coming in. So. I think the pumping helped and I was getting like a little bit of milk. Um, so yeah, I was like, we're just going to keep pumping until the midwife comes and then hopefully she can help us with the breastfeeding. So we were just pumping and we were just giving him bottles. I was doing that like every three hours. And then she, when she came, she helped us. She gave me a nipple shield. She's like, yeah, use a nipple shield. Like it doesn't have to be, you know, a long thing just to get, get you used to it. Um, and it worked a treat. So yeah, I ended up using the nipple shield for about maybe like two weeks. And then I gave it the flick and he was fine to just latch without it. Um, so yeah, and I was pumping in between as well. So yeah, it was a lot, it was full on. 
anyway I love this is pretty much my feeding and sleep journey so yeah I hope you I hope you've got a coffee or something or some snacks because it's probably gonna be a long video okay so that's pretty much the start my first couple of days after that midwife visit everything kind of was going a bit more smoothly my milk had come in he was feeding a lot better with the nipple shield and with the advice from the midwives um, and we'd also give him um, a bottle here and there um, if I wanted to go to sleep and Ryan would stay up with him. So that was all good. He was pretty much consistently waking every three hours, um, maybe a bit less. But yeah, I would say three hours until maybe like eight weeks. And then I think at eight weeks he did a four hour stretch. So that was like the longest and that was pretty consistent. Um, yeah, obviously <laughs> I'm just thinking, I remember looking back at like the monitor, like the monitor, the outlet monitor, and it says like longest stretch, four hours and something minutes. And I was like, oh my God, that is so good. Um, because literally like anything, any bit longer than three hours is just like amazing at that point. So yeah, basically until four months, he was waking every three hours. Sometimes he would go, like he'd do one stretch to four and then three hours after that um, until four months. And I was feeding him every time he woke up. Then we got to, I think it was like when he was three and a half months. So just before four months, we got to the four month sleep regression. And honestly, like I thought it was bad before this and then it honestly just all went to shit um he was waking probably like five to six times continuously during this time and like not going back to sleep so like he would wake i'd feed him and then he just wouldn't settle so like up until then he'd wake i'd like pull him up out of the bassinet feed him put him back in and he would actually just go back to sleep when we hit this regression, it was like nut nah. crying. There was a night I remember where he was still in the bassinet next to us and Ryan had the day off the next day. So he, um, and he knew I'd been struggling. So he was like, you know, I'll get up with you and I'll help. So we both got up to all the wake ups. I think he woke up like maybe eight times that night. Um, he just wouldn't like, he just wouldn't go back to sleep. Like he'd, He'd go, we'd put him down, he'd like be fine for like 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and then startle himself awake, just completely like screaming, upset, and just wouldn't resettle, wouldn't sleep properly. Mind you, so this was just overnight, mind you, up until he was, until I got the sleep consultant out, he's, he was a cat napper, like he never did naps longer than 45 minutes. Um, occasionally the 60 minute one occasionally but generally speaking it was 30 to 45 minutes was his naps so like on top of not getting much sleep at night I was you know when he did go down during the day it's not really enough time for me to go and have a nap because by the time I'd get myself into bed and fall asleep he'd be awake again um, so yeah it was just this constant cycle and then, yeah, it was just, it was hard. That four month period, that month and a half, that six weeks from like three and a half months to five months was honestly really, really tough. I ended up getting the sleep consultant out when he was four and a half weeks. So it had been about four weeks of this and I was like, nah, that's it. I was like exhausted. I was so tired. I was like, I need to get someone out and I need help because I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Yeah, I remember there was nights where I was just like crying on the floor with him, just like, what am I doing wrong? Like, why isn't my baby sleeping? Um, you know, and it was, it's hard. It's so hard. Um, so yeah, I got, I just reached out to the council and I got a free sleep consultant to come out and basically she watched me and guided me to resettle him during his nap. So she got here and he'd been down for about half an hour and then he woke up after 40 minutes and she's like, okay, let's go in and do a resettle. So she'd guide me through it 
and she basically just said if he's crying hysterically pick him up rock him um, as soon as he's quiet put him back down um, and just repeat the process so this is where it gets really tedious so um, she's like you know try to do it for an hour so like we want to do it until the next kind of bring him up to the time where he should have slept to and then after that if he hasn't if it hasn't been successful resettling him and he still hasn't gone back to sleep just get him up and start the rest of your like continue on with your day and do the rest of your routine so that's what I did and of course every time I put him down he was crying immediately so it's like a pick up rock put down pick up put down and as soon as he's quiet I'd walk out and then it's coming back in picking him up putting him down he's quiet walk out and he he'd start again um, another technique I used was just patting the mattress his cot mattress um, also I'll mention at this point we decided to move him into his room um, because we thought maybe like we were waking him up and that's what was contributing to the frequent wake-ups um, so we moved him into his cot at about four months and he was sleeping in there overnight. So yeah, I was, when he was crying, I was just going shh and patting the cot mattress if I didn't want to pick him up every time. If he ended up, like if that wasn't working for a while and he was getting hysterical, I'd then pick him up, rock him, put him down, walk out. And I'd always say my phrase. So I'd say time for sleepies or nanais um, and walk out. And so, yeah, I did that for uh, maybe a week and a half. It honestly, like, at the time, it feels like a long time. But a week and a half really isn't that long to do something for the long-term benefit. So I did that consistently, yeah. For I just spent the week at home. Obviously, like, you've got to live your life. And I know people are so, like... Some people are like, I don't want to sleep train because like I want to be able to go out and not have to be home when he sleeps. I now have that. Like I, because I put in this work, I now can go out and I just make sure that one of his naps is at home, like times it so we're at home so we can have a solid sleep in his cot. And then normally like I'll go out for the rest of the day and then he can have a nap in the car on the way home. Um, and that's worked wonders for us. So yeah, I did this for all of his naps. Um, sometimes I didn't do the full hour. I'll admit, like, she's like, my sleep consultant was like, if you're not, you know, if you're, you're just tired and you're just not up for doing the resettling for an hour, then that's fine. Just do it for 20 minutes or, you know, just, you know, try and do it each sleep cycle. So I did that. Tip of advice, if you're going to do that, I put an AirPod in. So, like, when I was doing the resettling, I just have a podcast on and just going shh so it just didn't feel like I was just constantly like wasting time like trying to settle him to sleep for something that he wasn't going to do because like half the time when you're doing these things it feels like you're spending more time trying to get them to sleep than they actually do sleep um, because most of the time he wouldn't even go back to sleep so yeah so yeah, I did that for, it honestly was probably a week and a half, maybe two weeks max. And he finally started improving his day naps. So he went from, like I said, 30 minute, 40 minute day naps to over an hour, which was a massive achievement for me. I was like an hour. Oh my God, amazing. Oh my God. Like I can actually like clean up, do some washing, like get stuff done in that time. Cook myself some food and it was great. Then once he started having like solid day naps, I did see his nighttime improve. So he was starting to do maybe like five or six hours overnight for the first stretch. And then after that, he'd wake up three hourly. So the problem with that is um, I would put him down to bed at like 6.37, sometimes even 6.00. So he'd do, say, like, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So he'd do from, like, 6 till 11, and then he'd wake up three hourly after that. So, of course, 
you know, I don't want to go to bed at six. I'm sure not many people want to go to bed at six. So it was kind of still unfortunate that his long stretch was that first stretch, but like, that's just the reality of it. Like that's just babies. Um, so yeah, I did try and make the effort to go to bed a bit earlier so I could get that longer stretch. Also, I forgot to mention when I was telling my sleep consultant about, you know, how he was going overnight, how he was still waking every like four hours, to feed um she basically said that that is normal for their age so he was four and a half months when i got her out and she's like it is still really normal for breastfed babies to wake every four hours for a feed um i think yeah it's just hard when you're comparing and i know so many people say you shouldn't compare because no baby's the same every baby's so different but when you've got people around you that their babies are sleeping for like eight hour stints um, you're like, oh, like, what am I doing wrong? Um, but yeah, anyway, it was just, it was just Lincoln. <laughs> so yeah, that was that. Then fast forward a little bit. So I kept doing that. And then once I started, his day nap started improving. I kind of, we fell into a little bit of a routine. So his days became a bit more predictable up until like five months his naps were all over the place because he was cat, nap cat napping. Um, so he was having like four or five naps some days that were just like really short naps. Um, so it was just really hard to predict his day. Um, then fast forward a little bit to he was six and a half months when he, I guess, slept through the night. So he did his first like eight hour, I think it was eight or nine hour stint. Um, which was like honestly incredible. I woke up feeling like a completely new woman <laughs> um, And I was like, oh my god, like he's finally slept through the night because I remember like thinking to myself months before that like He's never gonna sleep through the night Like he I'm gonna have that baby who just like doesn't sleep through until he's like 12 months old or something um, and he did it and I was like the happiest girl that day. I was in such a high the sun's just gone over so sorry if the lighting's changed um and then yeah i was feeling really positive and then the next night he woke up like three four hours so <laughs> it was short-lived um so he basically didn't sleep through the night consistently until he was around seven-ish months yeah or oh, even seven and a half i reckon it was like a month after that after he slept through that first time. So I'd say seven and a half months. And coincidentally, it was also the time I started introducing formula. So I know there's mixed opinions on this. Um, and I hear a lot of people say, and even the sleep consultant said to me that like formula is more filling. So formula fed babies usually sleep for longer periods. Um, so yeah, I started introducing some formula. He was breastfeeding like twice and then having two bottles of formula. And yeah, he started sleeping a lot better. Um, so I'm not sure if it was the introduction of formula or if it was just him getting better sleep. So he was basically having like a two hour nap and then a one hour nap or a one and a half hour nap. So he's probably having like three and a half to four hours a day sleep. Um, and then yeah sleeping like 11 hours overnight which is just incredible fast forward i feel like i've been talking for so so long um fast forward lincoln's gonna be 10 months oh my god in two days i can't i actually can't it's actually wild so he'll be 10 months in two days basically like i said he's been sleeping through consistently for the last two and a half months basically his routine now is he wakes up at around 7.30, sometimes 7, sometimes 8 or 8.30, just depending on the day. Like, I I don't really wake him up unless we have to. Um, I just let him sleep until whenever. Um, so, yeah, he'll wake up on average 7.30. Then I get him up. We ha He has a bottle. We have breakfast. Um, and then he plays a bit and then his first nap is normally like 9.30, between 9.30 and 10, he'll go down for his first nap and that's normally his big nap. So I normally make sure we're home for that nap and he has like a two hour nap, sometimes even two and a half hours, I know. 
Um, <laughs> it's just like crazy to me now that he naps so well. So proud of him and how far he's come. So yeah, two, about two hours he'll nap. So until 12 and then I get him up and yeah, we just go on with our day. And that's when I will like, if I have something on or I want to go out or meet up with someone, I usually say like, yeah, let's do 12 o'clock or around that time because I know that he's always, you know, he's always tired at around 9, 30, 10. So he will have his long sleep. And then once he's had his long sleep, I know I can kind of push out that other awake window um, and he won't, you know, he won't be too overtired. So yeah, then depending on the day, if we're just home, he will probably stay up until around three o'clock and then he'll go down for his second nap. So he'll normally do like an hour, sometimes an hour and a half for his second nap. So about three to 4.30. Um, and then his bedtime is usually at seven. Um, so that's at 4.30, or 7.30. Honestly, we don't have like a strict bedtime. It's normally, it's just based on his last wake window. So it's normally like three hours after or three and a half hours after his he wakes from his last nap so if he wakes at like four five six seven he'll normally go to bed like seven seven thirty if he wakes later we'll push him to eight o'clock um just so he's had enough sleep pressure and he's ready to go down um and yeah he completely self settles now like he doesn't i don't rock him to sleep nothing he knows as soon as he gets into his cot and he gets into his sleep sack, the white noise is on, he's got his dummy and I say na nice and he just rolls over and goes to sleep. Like I just, I couldn't ask for anything more. He sleeps, yeah, pretty much 12 hours overnight um, without waking. Like sometimes he will stir a little bit, like I'll hear him stir um, on the monitor, but then he'll put, him up, put himself back to sleep. Um, and yeah, that's basically our feed and sleep journey in a big nutshell. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you got some tips or, you know, just, I don't know. I just hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, if you did like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really supports my channel and yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye.